Checky check check. What's going on, Mama Jamas? Oh man, it's good to be back on the airwaves a little bit. You know, it's been a minute. <laughs> I saw my number went up again. I was like, dang, I gotta introduce myself. Yo, what's up? This is D Train. So uh, to, that's to uh, subscriber number ninety four. What's going on? Welcome to the uh, the crew. Yeah, man, I haven't been posting that much. I was, oh man, I'm still doing my doing my other thing. Got a little extra motivation. My brother, he's uh, he's dibbling and dabbling and experiencing some success. So I can't I can't let him outdo me. So I gotta I gotta up my game now, man. I got a a friendly competition going. So that's uh that's good. Matter of fact. I was going to work on that, and then I turn on YouTube. That's where I mess up, man. I turn on YouTube, start watching stuff, and I find out all this uh, this this North Carolina uh, news. It's kind of like, so I'm, I'm going to get into that, but I was on my tractor today, man. It felt good, except all them bugs, man. I had some in-laws from Hungary come in. They were like, Bogar. <laughs> I'm like, I know the bugs are crazy. <laughs> yeah, Bogar is a uh, Hungarian word for bug. But uh, but yeah, they came out and they got to shoot you know, some 12 gauges and and uh, some some firearms. And that's always kind of cool, you know, somebody, somebody from other countries who don't, probably don't have the place or the uh, opportunity to to do that kind of thing um when they come here it's like a it's like a good good release good training kind of good insight on uh some of the the uh, constitutional freedoms that we 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 um we have here that we can exercise uh which kind of dovetails into part of the conversation with this uh, UNCC shooting. Um, two dead, four, uh, four injured, I think. Uh, UNC Charlotte. It's about two hours from here, Raleigh. Two, two and a half. Um, what's, what is it? Ter- Terrell or Terrence or something? Terrell? What's the guy's name? Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know the dudes. What's the guy's name? Uh, anyway, he kind of he kind of looked, you know, little. It's just uh, what a history history major. Um, man, I tell you what, man. That's I. <laughs> I I never wanted to be a history major because I knew this really hot girl one time in college, and um. And her boyfriend was a, a history major, and uh, I didn't really know him. I just always saw him reading books and and like writing like ten, twenty page papers. And I'm like, gosh, I'm so glad I'm a I'm a, a biology major, you know, bio chemistry, chemistry minor. Yeah, I'd rather do uh, you know, uh, reports. You know, experiment reports on uh, how much you know titrations and shit. You know, I'd rather do. (laughs) I'd rather write those reports and write ten pages on what happened. But then, you know, I graduated from college, and then I became more interested in um, history and in in even uh, Shakespeare. Somehow, I I don't know what that was all about, but that was kind of cool. You know, you, there's some romantic type stuff in there. Um, but uh, I don't know what the hell I was just talking about. Anyway, on the last day of classes, man, last week of classes, you know, that's not, ah, oh, man, you know, and everybody's going to wonder what. You know, and people are probably going to, 
you know, start talking about what kind of guy he was and what, you know, his, his ideas and this and that. And I mean, the fact still remains, it's, it's not, it's not okay. People are, people are having more issues with dealing with, um, other people's, you know, being even more nowadays, it seems. And I think that's, you know, whichever side of the aisle he comes down on, um, it seems like more and more these days, a lot of people are having more issues just dealing with like things that they disagree with. And I get it. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say I went through that phase because I'm kind of still in that phase. You know, we're all in that phase in a, in a way, but we all have different levels of dealing with it. You know, you know, I get upset about some stuff and then you know just be like well what you gonna do <laughs> you, know, you can't really make somebody think opposite of the way they already think unless you know which is part of the discourse you know you you say some things that make some sense and hopefully over time but that's the long game man that's the long game of it just you know I, and, and and you don't want to get too like preachy either cuz you know I've been through that you know you just you learn some new information man you want to shout it to the world and if people don't listen then which I mean come on people not listening to what you say maybe they're not really uh ready to to hear the message Right. I heard an old guy say one time, he said, you know, when people are sleeping, you know, sometimes you got to let them sleep because you just woke up. You just woke up yourself. You still yawning. Like you haven't really started researching, researching, researching. You know, now some people are more researched up. I can tell, man. I know some people on here, man. It's just like they can just like. They just got it where they just know it, you know, know just different things, you know. You know, it's kind of like multi-geniuses out here on YouTube, just just shooting the shit with their homies. <laughs> but if you recognize that you have your own special information that you kind of are good at, then I guess you won't be intimidated so much by all these uh bright people and of course you got some dumbasses but you know whatever everybody has kind of a, a voice but people are people seem to be more uh, that's why that's why when I see people uh, shouting into the screen it kind of reminds me of me like 2011 2010 2009 2008 <laughs> I'm just saying man and I'm just like wow yeah I get it I get it I get it but uh sometimes you gotta pause anyway so the teachers are protesting. The other day, I get this. Uh, I get this um, uh, message on my phone. The principal saying, "Hey, we're having a Wednesday. It's gonna be a uh, teacher work day. Had <laughs> no kids, so do not send your kids to school." Um, let's see here. If your kids need to eat, they can come to school at around 12. I'm like, why y'all going to open a cafeteria for the kids, right? Like, I know some kids probably, I guess, I guess a lot of kids don't have lunch or something at home. I don't know. How does that work? 
like it seemed like if the kids can't be in school wherever they're gonna be should probably have some food there unless it's a special circumstance and i guess that's probably what they're going for but uh <laughs> i just found that interesting and um and so so basically what they're fighting for let me see should i do this uh screen share should i do the screen share thing or is that going to take up too much Okay, so basically, look, under uh, the last governor, he was a Republican. They got a, they, uh, it was like a, a raise across the board, I think. What, two, four percent or something like that? Five? I, I, don't, I don't remember. Anyway, they got a raise. Everybody got a raise, but it seemed like the, the, uh, the more experienced teachers. Because I think they were trying to get more um, younger uh, teachers into the fold, you know. And so I, I think what happened was then the uh, more experienced teachers with like masters and stuff, they were like, okay, but what about us? And so then it was like, <laughs> all right. So they voted out the guy that got everybody a raise. Right. In the last couple of years, I guess, last year or so, they've been uh, protesting for more uh, raises, you know, and it hasn't happened. And this is uh, what Roy Cooper. But I don't know. It's it's still, I think, a Republican uh, majority in the Senate, but maybe not in the like the state Senate. I, I may be wrong. But it's not a super majority like it was. So I don't I don't know all the different politics. It's, it sucks. I know more about what somebody, you know, from a different state said in the news, but like state politics is kind of lacking. You gotta stay up on it or else next thing you know, you're gonna find out that, you know, your senators passed a a, a law that said you can abort a newborn baby, you know. You kind of have to uh, pay attention. So they're they're trying to get some uh, get some more monies, and then I um I remember, dude, they've been doing this forever. They've been doing this forever. Oh man, I forgot to mention um Kevin Reichert. Um in the last uh segment I did on the UNC shooting, UNC uh Charlotte shooting, it kind of made me uh go back to the uh shooting back at U on UNC's campus back in 1995. I would have been a sophomore sophomore junior. And uh, I was everywhere, man. Not I, I would look. I gotta specify. There was a there was a guy they called everywhere, man. While I was there, but I wasn't that guy. I'm just, I'm just saying I was everywhere. Space, man, because there was an everywhere man, and he actually made it into the uh, Daily Tar Heel, which is the uh, campus paper. Uh, they drew a picture of him, and I guess he probably didn't know he was that guy. But everybody else knew who he was. <laughs> it was like, yeah, that's everywhere, man. It was like he was in everybody's classes, you know, this guy. And then they drew a picture of him, and it's like, oh, damn, now he knows that he's that dude, um, which was kind of funny. Um, matter of fact, there were some friends of mine who didn't know who he was until they saw the picture in the newspaper right like it was a, just a drawing it wasn't even a picture it was a drawing of him and then the guys looked at it and say like, oh that guy's in one of my classes <laughs> <laughs> oh dude and he looked i mean the drawing wasn't it was like a cartoon drawing but the cartoon of him was perfect it was just just like this dude like anyway so that day on uh on our, on our it was actually downtown 
and I think I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and screen share this dude. Um because I think he deserves it. He uh he was there in uh Chapel Hill on that day when uh this Wendell Williamson guy like shot like he like killed a couple people and uh injured a couple but this guy he uh he tackled dude and i don't know if this uh i don't know if he got out or not yet this wendell williamson but he was at butner for a long time and uh i don't know if he's supposed to get out or what but this is what january 29th 2015 daily tar heel 125 but yeah i want to remember this guys because you never know he might come up to the spot and, you know i don't want to you know because i remember that time my mom was calling you know my phone trying to make sure i was okay this dude looks familiar it's like i know him i feel like i know this guy <laughs> i probably know him and don't know because i'm bad with names i'm so bad with names bill Le leon Bill Leon. He's like three years older than me. No, two years. Or no, this was back in 2015. So that's four. So add four more years to that. Four more years to that. Okay, so yeah, somewhere in there. But yeah. So yeah, but um, but there's heroes all over the place. It's just, you know. be nice to be able to i guess uh protect yourself wherever you are you know that's why i'm uh i support the second amendment but uh kevin reichert he was uh, a standout lacrosse player on the uh, lacrosse team back then and, and i remember um some of the guys I, I was in uh class with uh I would always see them out, you know, and this one guy, he was on the lacrosse team. I would see him out. He was in one of my classes. It was like one of the upper level uh, biology classes, was like cell bio or something like that. And uh, and this guy would be acing, acing like his exams. <laughs> it, he would just be like, boom, 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 ace. And he's on the lacrosse team. So I know his schedule is hectic, right? But I'm seeing him out at all these parties too. <laughs> he was just savage, dude. He could just get it done. So that was kind of cool. But um, it kind of sucks when you know you know people. And that's the other thing I wanted to say about this is that you know, even though this guy went to, um, in this case UNC with Kevin Reichart, uh, but in this other case where the two kids died at UNC Charlotte. It's like, it's not, it just doesn't affect that school because more often than not, like somebody at your school knew them. It happens all the time. You know, I mean, North Carolina is pretty big, but it's kind of interconnected. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of familiar faces and names and and you know connections uh so it doesn't only affect that one place it affects like the whole state multiple states you know what i'm saying and uh these assholes who who feel like they can just do that you know it'd be nice to be able to like take them out and let them feel it See what, it, see what it feels like to get shot. Um, so, yeah. Um, so back to this other thing. So the teachers are protesting. And, uh, and, and I was going through, like, this house. Like, we clean houses. Uh, and, and sometimes I see, like, things that just like, wow, that's different. 
So I'm looking at all these like magazines and stuff, and I don't know what made me pick up this magazine because I felt like it was probably historic or it probably has some historical like perspective in it that I could use or or compare now with it. It's um, what is it? It's Newsweek. <laughs> It's a, okay. So this house, I think, had a bunch of Newsweek articles, and they may be around here somewhere. That's the whole thing, man. I gotta, I gotta look through some of these boxes. I'm looking at the oh, what page is this? I don't want to lose my page. September twenty fifth, nineteen sixty seven. Fifty cents. And look at the uh, title. Get the title. What is the title? Can you see that? Oh man, it's backwards. But you can see. Hold on. Do I have to tilt it? No, tilt it away. September I think it's backwards, but you can see it. The school crisis. The school crisis. And I've been meaning to read this thing. Uh, and I've read quite a bit of it. But uh, I was looking through today, just before coming on here, at this one section. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the most immediate problem, however, is getting the schools open and ghetto children back in class. And this must be done in the midst of a struggle to determine nothing less than who will finally control the schools. There are three competing camps, the boards of education and their central administration, the traditional bodies of power, the teachers, newly organized, militant, and anxious for a voice in policy making, and particularly, uh, particularly in the ghettos, the parents and community itself. They all profess the same aim. All we're asking for, said a striking New York teacher last week, is that schools in the city be on a par with schools in the suburbs. To many Negro parents in New York, however, the striking teachers sounded suspiciously as if they wanted to push the minority child out. Aside from its pay demands of a wage scale of $7,000 to $14,000, the United Federation of Teachers, AFL-CIO, also wants the contract to guarantee teachers the right to call in a panel to evict disruptive children from the classroom. In Negro eyes, the disruptive child issue looked like an attempt by white middle class teachers to get rid of lower class Negro pupils whose behavior they couldn't or wouldn't understand. So, I'm, I'm reading this, and this is in a, I guess, inner city area. So it's Newsweek. I don't know. You guys probably know better who writes that and where it is and all that, who the publisher and all that, editors. And, but reading it, it looks, it sounds like it might be a leftist leaning uh, publication um, because they they were talking about not wanting to <laughs> get rid of the problem kids um and i can understand that on some level but what can you do when you got kids messing up the classroom environment you know and it seems like to me uh today all the way from 1967, it seems like they went the other way and said, okay, we're going to just let the uh, disruptive kids do what they want. 
because now you have um i don't know it seemed like a situation where like i don't know they call it bullying i guess that's what it is but um i don't know it just seems it it, it seems like the way they deal with bullying isn't good because i, I don't think they should allow these kids to keep on being in uh, like if if like what do you do if you keep on messing with people you're just going to keep on messing with people some people just don't need to be around other people you know just make them find other options for their education you know because you can't keep messing up the damn classroom and expecting kids to you know want to be there number one you know, you got kids who want to pay attention. And then another kid gets their attention and says, oh, well, they were talking to me, too. And then now that good kid is, like, in trouble. You know? Like, you're just trying to <laughs> you're just trying to pay attention in class. So what are you supposed to do? I don't know. I'm going to read the rest of that uh, article. But it goes to show that... Um, and another thing, I think the board of the board of uh, what is it, the uh, education board of education, B O E, seems like it's more of a centralized thing now with the uh, whole Common Core deal. They kind of they kind of went went with that option. Looks like because now the teachers really don't have a say in. Uh, and really what they can and should do. Like they're teaching a completely different way than even uh, 20 years after that was written. 1987? It wasn't like that, like it is now. I mean, I was in school in 1987. I was... Damn, how old was I? Okay, 80... Nineteen eighty. Damn, that was what? Ooh, ten or so, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Hell, I was I was an age, but I was in you know still that. I remember back in the day, man. We used to have to like uh, do like if we were going over multiplication, we would have to do like twenty of them on one page. They would give us a book. All right, do page uh, 16, 17, and 18. It would have some multiplication. It was like 20 multiplication problems. Then it had like some word problems that you had to figure out. And then it had some other stuff. But it, it had a repetition. In a, and you, once you get a rhythm and learning how to do it, you kind of get it, right? They don't do it like that now, man. They like, okay put them into draw a circle over here and a circle over here and you know like when they're doing division okay how many times can you divide you know um two into like eight right so you start out with eight dots right you put them into two things and then you got four and four now you know the answer is four right I mean, I can kind of get it, but I think the kids should know, okay, go do your twos this week 20 times, two times one, two times one. Okay, I don't need to do that one. Two times, I know that one. Okay, all right, now do your threes. All right, do your four. Okay, six and seven, kind of tricky, you know. Eight, nine, you know, it's got a few tricks in there, right? About repetition, man. Get that shit ingrained. It's the basics. If you at least get the basics, and that's the basics, and they're teaching it kind of different. And so these teachers are protesting, which I get it. If you if you got your like master's degree in education and you're a good teacher, you know, I I I. I <sighs> 
how do you measure the quality of a teacher is like what how good the chip but then it could be like an easy test or it could be that they have a better methodology of teaching how do you how do you t pay those teachers more and have some kind of a system where maybe the teachers whose kids don't seem to do well after their class you know what i mean how do you measure that like so what i gotta we gotta pay across the board more but but how you gonna wait a minute here's the thing how you gonna give a teacher with a master's degree more money if they're forced to teach the same way as the teacher who just got hired right if you got this way of teaching that you're mandated to teach like right You all teaching the same thing now, you know, personality. I'm I'm pretty sure now on the lower ages, age groups, that comes more into play. But in the higher age groups, you start getting into more um advanced material. So in that respect, I guess that that would be another thing. You know. goodness gracious it's a complex thing and and i don't i don't know i don't i don't know man it just always seems to be issues with the education system they keep on asking for more money and i get it but how are you going to keep asking for more money when you're just letting people into the country willy-nilly and then that's putting pressure on the school system and ain't nobody saying nothing about it you know, that's not that's not an issue. Oh, we got larger class sizes. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> you got an open border, yo. How in the hell are you going to, like, maintain small classes when you got anybody, anything goes? And so what you're going to see is more teachers, I'm sorry, more parents taking their kids out of school. I'm just telling you, that's what's going to happen. It's, it, it's, I mean, come on. What, 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 you, what you supposed to, you know, it's going to happen. I'm, I bet it's happening right now. I just ain't see it, but. It's gonna happen. It's how hey, I'm hey, you know what? I'm gonna go so far as to say it's happening. Look at all look at all these people trying to uh 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 blame families for vaccinating. And part of that reason is because they're in the schools, you know, I think. And they can't and it's like in some countries, it's like they they putting people in jail who uh homeschool their kids and don't vaccinate or something like that. Was that London or the UK or somewhere? Or Germany? I don't know, somewhere over there, but hell, it's happening here too. In California, don't they have this rule where you gotta, you know what I mean? So, anyway, let's move on to the next thing. Sylvia Hatchell, basketball coach. Wow. What do you say, man? I you know I, I look at this story and I'm just like something just sounds a little funny. Something sounds not funny, but I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying before about people not being able to take as much. But that it, you know, hell, I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't in the room. She could have just went over the top a few too many times but you, she has people that worked for her for years you know what i'm saying got people you, you would think that i don't know maybe i'm not close enough to the issue which hey i concede the point i mean i don't really talk to too many people in the uh athlete athletic you know department you know you know uh, coaches and stuff i, I mainly um I'm able to be more around the students 
Um, and some of those students are athletes. I'm assuming from how you know big these people are and how fit they look, but Carolina's got a lot of fit people in it anyway. I think the other night some cheerleaders came up and uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, let's snap back out of that. <laughs> <laughs> so Sylvia Hatchell, what is she, how many years she's been with Caroline? 30 something, 30 something years, 33, 34, 5. Uh, I remember when I was in school, this is like 1994, 5. What year was that? 1994. I would have been what, a freshman? Because I think, I think the men's team won the year before. I believe the men's team won the year before, and that was the year I think Marion Jones was my my year. She was a freshman. I remember she would always walk through campus smiling. Uh, um, seemed like a really pleasant young lady, and uh, and she was fast. She would like dribble up the court, bing bing, boom boom, dude. That team was so awesome. They had Charlotte Smith with the shot. They had some other players too, man. I can't, you can't. I see now. I got. I remember these ladies walking through. I can see their faces. It's just I don't remember everybody's name. But of course, you know, after after uh, Charlotte Smith hit that shot, you know, her name became like, you know, legendary on campus and 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 through the history books of uh, UNC. Uh, I believe she was on staff at UNC. If she wasn't, I believe she was uh, at some point. Um, and Marion Jones, you know her. She was, you know, track star forever after that. Um, and uh, so Sylvia Hatchell, she she's got this national title, and and. I don't know. I just feel like I've just been out of the loop now because I know people who just love going to the games. Uh, and I'm guessing if they are a season ticket holder of the uh, basketball, maybe they know the, the coach, especially, you know, knowing these people that I know. And, uh, and I'm looking at, I'm just like doing some research on this, right? So I'm just like, okay, so the shot. I got the shot. I already talked about the shot. She's got the fifth most wins in, you know, Division One women's basketball history behind, you know, those big names, the Tennessee coach, the Connecticut coach. But she had like 1,023 victories. That is an amazing number. She, Hey, look, she stopped right at the perfect time. 1,023 mother fathers. <laughs> 1,023. That is a boss number to go out on, dude. She, I'm so glad she left on that number. 1,023. What's up? Right. I think I think she was here when Jordan was here. Matter of fact. Or when I say here, I mean Carolina. Um I wanna say Charlotte Smith was had the first dunk in the game. I wanna say that, but I may be I may be mistaken because I've heard other firsts and you know, I don't know. But I remember I remember that was kind of a big deal. So Sylvia Hatchell was in what she was on the uh, she was in Seoul, South Korea with Seoul, South Korea, 1988 Olympic gold assistant coach, uh, assistant coach. OK, so women's basketball Hall of Fame inducted uh, what? Uh, 2004. Right. I'm just like, wow. And not only that, she had leukemia. What what year was that? 2012, 2013, she had cancer. I'm like, man. 
part of me feels like you know she was just ready maybe maybe there's some frustration there somehow people say things and you know maybe as the years go by you have a way <clears throat> most people can deal with it and then this new age comes through and I mean, you got to understand, not too long ago, they tore down a statue on campus. You feel me? The statue's been there for, what, 100 years or something? So, if you're offended by a statue, hell, you might be offended by some harsh words. If you're not used to hearing that kind of uh, criticism, hell, I don't know. She could have been like, "You niggas is lazy." <laughs> I don't know. She could have. She could have just went, "Yo, I thought y'all could jump and run and shit." <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying that's what she said. I'm just imagining what. You know, it could have been said, you know, if I was the coach, you know, the hell's wrong with y'all? You know, for for a bunch of black folks, y'all pretty slow. <laughs> I thought y'all could jump high and shit, dude. I, I've recruited you. You could jump higher than this, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Even the white players are are faster than you. What's that? Come on, dude. Get your weight up. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, like like uh, you know, like people from a different era, a different age, man. They that they like uh a lot of times, man, that's how they that's how they got dealt with. You know? It wasn't like pancakey, like, oh, come on. No, it was like, yo, man, you need to stop bullshitting. Get off your fucking ass, man. It's all it's all in your head. You need to get, you know, you need to get your shit straight. You know, it's like straight up, no, you know, and you know, I'm sure. I mean, just think about it. Like back in the day when they would like call, they could call people niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like how far we've come to where now you can't like you can't talk hard to people. <laughs> you know. Like what's I don't know. Like you know, I'm looking at I'm looking at Coach K's teams, right, or his way of doing it. And I look at uh, Roy, right, Roy and Coach K, right. When you hear them in a uh, in an interview, or when you see them, like you just you just know that they might be able to say some foul shit. Even Roy, I know Roy has this like kind of like oh shucks kind of thing going but dude i bet roy is raw roy i bet behind a hey, i bet ain't no cameras hey shut that shit off they put leave all your shit out there i'm gonna be a hey, y'all motherfuckers are running today get your ass down there we you acting like a big ass blah blah, blah. i bet a hey, I bet, I bet, I bet Roy could uh could match uh uh Coach K in the swearing department. He just kind of like has to portray the uh the Carolina way. But uh, but if you look back, even with the men's basketball teams, they had some issues with some players a few years ago. Just talking like, oh uh, man, oh remember Matt Darty. It was like they pushed Matt out because he was kind of hard on him. And then when he was on his way out 
and and Roy was on his way in. I guess they had coached together, or Roy coached him, or something like that. And uh, yeah, and then they coached together, and he was like, "Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, if you look at my coaching style, it's kind of like Roy Williams." <laughs> <laughs> so you just get in the like the raw you just getting like the the boiled down version of like what I'm trying to do pretty much. So and then there was that transition period where it's like, okay, they won a national title. Okay. So he came in and went, and he won. And then over the years, you know, he won a couple more. Right? Was it oh five, oh nine? And this uh, was uh, 17, 18, 19, yeah, 17, 2017, I believe. All right, so that's three more. And that was after the one that they won with, um, no, they didn't want, win one. Did Jawad Williams was on that? Was he on the team? I don't think so. I think that was before. Anyway, I think that was right right around the beginning. But he won with um, the Felton. Uh, those guys. Anyway, it's not really important. I'm just saying, like, anytime there's, like, a long-time coach, man, you got these, you know, new kids coming in, they probably talking to their parents, like, mom, they talking shit to me, like, I bet it goes on in every sport, too, man, they saying I ain't shit, you know, boo-hoo, I mean, I'm not saying that nothing happened, but I'm just saying there's a, there's a change in the way people want to be dealt with, and they got more power because of all of this and that, you know, and uh, it's not really power <clears throat> if you think about it, depending on the circumstance, because like I said, you you tearing down monuments and, you know, monuments to who? Uh, I don't know, but it seems like there's a more, there's more willingness to, uh, to uh, break things. <laughs> and when you do that, you got to understand that at some point you're going to have to build too, right? I was listening to the radio the other day and it sounded like they were trying to get uh, get rid of her for a minute, but then, you know, you can't, how you going to fire somebody that keep winning, <laughs> you know, this, that, and I'm a winning coach. Uh, man, she just got cancer. You can't fire somebody who just got cancer, right? Damn, okay, we got to hold on to her ass. And we got to pay her on the year off. Maybe not, I don't know. But it's like, you know, it's kind of weird, man. I didn't know all of this was going on under the damn, you know, what you call I thought, you know what I'm saying? I thought it was all good. I know people who like to go to the games, you know? I, you know, shit. I didn't know there was turmoil. But, you know, I kind of stayed in my own thing anyway. Like, right now, I feel bad because I, I'm supposed to be doing something else, but I'm enjoying talking and, and drinking my coffee. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, times are changing and um, things are either going to go further down this road or there's going to be a correction. And um, hey, I don't know which way it's going to go, but I think some things are becoming more clear to me and uh, part of it is less bullshit, more action. And um, I don't know, maybe homeschool your kids. Um, 
I think one of the next uh, videos I do, I'm going to, I'm going to read some of these, um, uh, package inserts of some of these, uh, these vaccines. Cause I don't think anybody does that. Do they, do they read them online or am I allowed to, am I allowed to, how about we just play a guessing game? Right. How about I, I read them without saying who it is? And uh, you can guess. <laughs> that's, that's the suspense, right? I'm going to read the adverse reactions of the vaccines that they give your kids. And I said, all right, guess which one this is. <laughs> How's that for scaring the shit out of somebody? <laughs> That's brilliant. I just thought of that. I don't even have to like name anybody. I just hey, look. All right, look. This one. I'm gonna give you a hint. This one is like three shots in one. <laughs> Can you say Guillaume Barre? Yeah, I couldn't either until I looked this up. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I think I just gave the world my idea. I tell you what, if hey, if it works, then, you know, hey, run with it, dog. Hell, I'm kind of bogged down with my, my shit. And it's getting closer. And like I said, man, I got my brother on it now and he's like, he's doing well. My brother's always been pretty, pretty solid, you know. Uh, if, I, if I was going to look up to somebody, he'd be a good one to look up to. Mr. JDP. Yep, yep. But yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a little, that's nice uh, brotherly uh, competition. He's, uh, he's, ex he's ex uh, experienced some, some success. So now I gotta, I gotta up my game, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe we'll do that uh, vaccine thing at some point. I, I hear that. I hear, I hear talk of the vaccines going around. So I'm just going to do my yearly thing. I want to do something, you know? Hey, how about this? The, hey, all you got to do is read the package inserts, right? And um, what what typically happens? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm I'm actually going into it now. Look at this. What typically happens is you take your kids, and and they already got shit, you know, trade up, you know, kind of because they know why they there, and then they give you this uh these like eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper it's usually in bright colors and it has all the you know instructions this is what this is this is why we do this da -da 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 -da. it's like okay yeah but where's the package insert Where's the where's the insert that came with that now you start talking like that now they now they it's like it's like it's like they see you seeing them and they live, right? We got one that can see. Now you're on the radar. And now that's when you get the attitude. I'm telling y'all, man, I'm not telling I'm not saying anything I haven't been through. So all of you people who are, you know, pro vaccine, try to try to say that you don't want one of them. Just just float that balloon. Just float the balloon and see what kind of change you go through in your in your life. And then come back and talk to me. Yeah, I'm gonna let that one sit right there for a second. Um so ask for the package insert and say you want to read the adverse reactions. Just on one. Just one. Now, mind you, 
they've been pumping your kids since they uh since they since they since you had them your kids screaming you don't know what the fuck is going on you don't know what's going inside their body you don't know why but this is the accepted thing <sighs> Just pick one. Just pick one. Float that air balloon, bruh. Float that balloon out there. I'm not saying deny, say I'm not going to do any of this shit. One. Try one. Say I'm not going to do this one. Out of all of them, just one. I challenge you. Put your fucking balls on the goddamn table. Put some skin in the goddamn game, bruh. When I say bruh, I'm not talking to anybody in particular at all. At all. I Look, I love all of y'all. I'm just saying I know what I had to deal with. I'm not talking about conjecture. I'm not talking about I heard. Just one. Just do it just one. Just once. So therefore, on the other hand, nevertheless, word. <sighs> 